Travis went good though. <clears throat> Been up all night, so I want to get this video out and out as quick as I can before I crash. Been up all night. Da -da 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 -da. So it's uh, Joseph Smith's birthday, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints have ghosted him. He's supposed to have been the founding prophet, seer, revelator, translator of our church. This is what we claim, anyway. And yet, the church that claims to be founded upon Joseph Smith has forgotten his birthday. I thought that was only a, a husband thing. Forgetting his wife's birthday. <laughs> this is a little more important than that. And so instead, they're pushing the wrong Christ on Mormons. Jesus. First Nephi, chapter 1, verse 2. Learning of the Jews is not Christian, and it is not Jesus. And so this church is abominable. And that's why they forgot Joseph Smith's birthday. <clears throat> they lie to you, Mormons. And you are so stubborn that you don't care. And you attack me for pointing out the simple thing that's plain and precious. And so, I uh, am remembering back to when uh, I was helping the church reformat their scriptures for the Spanish editions in 2009. And I was given Acts and I think even First Peter, but definitely Acts. And I knew that it's talking about a cornerstone and a capstone. I was the one who did the psalm that had the same thing. I did Isaiah. It had the cornerstone for Zion <clears throat> and yet I knew because I knew Greek that the head of the corner is not the cornerstone because the cornerstone is talked about in 1 Peter in verse 6 there's the cornerstone but verse 7 is a different stone. It is not the cornerstone. It is not the chief cornerstone of the cornerstone. To God, Nelson. There are just so many clues, Mormons, about how this church ain't true. And, dear God, you have rejected Joseph Smith when you say that he was Christian, when you say that his Christ was Jesus, you have rejected him. And that's what this is talking about. It is a prophecy of the latter days, because it's Jewish. And so you're supposed to use Jewish interpretation. It's about the Jewish Christ. And Joseph Smith made it very clear that uh, he's going to be a Mormon. And so Jacob chapter 4, it's not talking about the Jews, it's talking about Mormons. Because <clears throat> Jacob chapter 4 verse 17 has it as well. How is it possible that Mormons, after having rejected Joseph Smith, can ever build upon him that it may become Zion? with the Christ of Mormons.
the stumbling of the Mormons that they will reject the Joseph Smith. So yeah, Second Nephi chapter three. Mormons who use Christianity to interpret this with Jesus believe that the Book of Mormon is literal history, therefore, rather than the learning of the Jews. And so they only see this as a prophecy about the coming of Joseph Smith. And when we get to verse 5, Mormons ignore the meaning of the sentences. Because it starts off with talking about the coming of Joseph Smith, not the Messiah. And the purpose for Joseph Smith is that through him, his church, will come the Messiah of the latter days. And Mormons put Jesus in there. And so it doesn't make any sense. How can Jesus be from the Roman period of time, but then come through Mormons to be the Christ of Zion? Mormons don't care. As long as they have the right feelings, they don't care about literature and grammar and definitions. And so, section 103, verse 16 is the Mormon Christ. But yeah, this is what it's all about. The church has rejected Joseph Smith. They came out with the Joseph Smith papers and refused to make the changes necessary that Joseph Smith had originally had. They're sticking with the changes that Brigham Young caused. They're sticking with the plagiarized documents that Brigham Young caused. And so Mormons, as a result, also reject Joseph Smith because the church does. Mormons don't study the Joseph Smith papers. They don't even study their scriptures. Because as long as the prophets don't say anything about them, Mormons don't worry about it. <clears throat> They're casual Mormons. We're staying Mormon. And here in verse 3 is the warning. There's utterly be destroyed. That's the passage in Acts that Joseph Smith is talking about in a second vision when he says precisely as it stands in our New Testament. It's not cut off. It's utterly destroyed from the Greek. And that's the fate of Mormons because they have rejected Joseph Smith and because they rejected Joseph Smith, they reject their Messiah in the latter days too. They don't care to know who he is. They don't care to look for a man who has the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, translator. Who knows Greek, who knows Paleo-Hebrew, who knows Egyptian. And so Mormons remain in blindness, in darkness. Staying in darkness rather than coming out of the light in hidden darkness and in captivity. It's the end of verse 5. Prove it! Prove it! Put it right there on the, the thumbnail picture. Oh my god. And it was at least up for seven seconds for you to look at it in the video. This is the sad reality of Mormons. After 200 years, they've rejected their Christ and the Founder.